All right, just checking stubble height, which actually seems pretty decent here. And, um, you know, there's material. Let's see how much is here. So here we are, May 14th, beating my own personal record for the earliest I've ever tried first cut uh, by one day, I think. <laughs> I think there was a year that I mowed on May 15th. Um, I only have the bailing date for that year. Anyhow, uh, yeah, this is, this is wild. Um, really was hemming and hawing about whether to try this super early batch. And after getting into the field and seeing how much is here, I feel really justified. Uh, so talk about what's going through my head, I guess. Um, I'm definitely the first person around that I know of to try dry hay. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing baleage, not chopping this. This is going to be uh, hopefully <laughs> nice dry bales. So this, the growth seems to be ahead this year and with enough here to make it and maybe a five day stretch here, if I'm lucky. Um, right now what they're talking about forecast wise is... No serious rain till next Saturday. Today's Sunday. Uh, maybe Friday. Might get some showers. I'm ready for that to change. Tiny, tiny chance of showers on Tuesday night. So in about 48 hours, which shouldn't hurt this much, but I'm going to take it nice and easy with it. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So it's supposed to be nice and at least partly sunny the next few days. Wednesday is going to be full sun, but a high of like 58. So what my plan is, if you know, if Wednesday was a warmer day, I'd think about trying to bail, you know, four days from now. Um, 
well, three days from now, <laughs> uh, four, four heydays, including today. But instead, what I hope to do on Wednesday is to get everything uh, ready to go. I mean, teed up, raked, have it feeling beautiful. And then on Thursday, with it being warmer, I think high 60s, and again, supposedly full sun, uh, that'll be the day to try to put it together. This stuff takes quite a while. It's almost like second cut with how much leaves are in it and the color and the quality. Um, but there are tons of stems in this. And, you know, it's from this really lush grass growth that's the orchard grass is ahead. I mean, <laughs> I've saw definitely seed heads forming, which is, it's early for that to be happening on May 14th. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to give this a nice, long, thorough dry down and see what we put together. I was definitely worried about this being a comical yield getting into it. I think there's more here than I thought there was, which I think I say every year when I try this. Um, we'll see. I've had years that I've done this later May and gotten 60 bales off this field, and other times I've gotten 200 something. So it's, like I've said before, this super early stuff is hard to judge. Um, but with any luck, I, I don't know. My hope is there's at least 75, maybe 100 here, maybe more. It's It was really thick in some spots, really thin in some spots. It's hard to really gauge the yield on this stuff but i'm awfully glad i gave it another half a week i was thinking about it last wednesday or thursday and i think this stuff really really kicked up and grew even in the last three days with all the the nice sunny warm weather we've had so remains to be seen we'll see what happens <laughs> leave for tomorrow which you could do today so went and got the elevator from across town and got that set up a couple mulch bales went up fine so that should be good to go even though we don't need it for several days okay it's about 11 a.m the next day we have a lot of dry down that happened ted had sat around three and sat all night with a lot of wind the dew wasn't super heavy this morning and we've got some definitely even crispiness going on in the thinner material so I'm going to give this an intermediate tedding, not, not nearly as hard as the first one I did, but uh, working my way towards getting more gentle, and we'll just kind of keep this moving up and around and still work on these big, juicy stems. They, uh, they're going to take some work. <laughs> Tuesday, day three. It's about 10.30. Uh, if I didn't have stuff I had to do midday, I would have definitely let this sit for longer. But we had almost no dew last night, I think thanks to all the breeze. So it's making progress. Like I knew it would be slow and steady, but I'm seeing good, good sign of stems drying down. So I'm just going to gently fluff this up and leave it for most of the day. Um, tomorrow, they're saying full sun and only a high of like 57. So I don't think tomorrow is going to be the bailing day, which I, I that was my plan to to wait a little bit. Thursday's looking beautiful. It's, you know, taking a while, but that's okay. I'd rather be slow and patient and not rush with this. Did forget to say my plan is to rake this this afternoon, even if I'm not going to bail it for a couple days. It's getting diminishing returns on the tedding. It's time to get it up in some windrows. They're talking about really nice breezes all night long again. So I think that's what this needs as next step. Wow. Well, this stuff is almost there. It's about 3 p.m., when we got the truck bumper fixed and everything. And this stuff is gorgeous feeling. It, uh, some of the stems are still holding on to a little bit of sap as, as I knew they would. So I know today's not the day to bail it, even though, <laughs> gosh, by sight and by feel, it looks ready to bail. But uh, I think these bales end up sweating, you know, amazing material. And then green stems still. So I'm gonna give this Again, like I've said, tomorrow the high is only supposed to be like 58. So, we'll see. If we get enough sun and it really gets crispy, I'll think about it. But my plan really is to wait till Thursday. So we're going to get this in windrows and then probably just roll them over once tomorrow. The leaves don't need any more drying help at this point. It's just getting air through it and getting the stems to finish.
Oh, it's going to be tempting not to try this today. <laughs> it's barely 50 degrees right now. Now they're saying the high is going to be 55, which given our end of town, I bet it'll be even a little less than that. But this stuff <laughs> looks pretty ready to me. So we'll see. I'm going to uh, re-rake it, fluff it up, under, get the underside to dry out. Uh, and see what it looks like today. I might just do that and I'll still leave it for tomorrow or see how it looks and feels in a few hours. I'm not sure I could get the rose to stay in one place long enough to bail it today anyway. <laughs> I'm curious, I might do uh, one lap around the fields worth of test bales later. I'm always curious to compare the moisture readings over the next couple weeks and, you know, for my own future reference, if I'd only had a four day stretch, I think I could have gotten this fine. So we'll see, I might change my mind and <laughs> go crazy and do the whole thing, but I think doing a, a science batch and double checking the balers working well might not be a bad idea. Well, I just made six test bales. My plan was just to go once around the field, so just curious how these are coming together. Proved to myself the baler's in good working shape, which it is. And uh, I'm curious how these will compare in storage compared to the stuff that we're gonna put together tomorrow, hopefully. This field got blown around enough by the wind, it really was not, not gonna be, yeah, look at it go right there. Not gonna be efficient to try to actually bale this today, but I was just really curious how this would compare. I did the same thing last year on a little later in May and a little warmer weather. I bailed some at the three day mark and then the rest of the four day and all of it ended up being fine. But it's uh, helpful to do little science batches while I still have the energy. Okay, I think it's game time. Got the dew fully off of this, although there was barely any this morning. Any random sampled stems seem great. I don't know if anybody else does this. I do the bite test. Take a stem and bite into it lengthwise and see how much sap's on the inside. Not much, and the rest of it is bone dry. So the, uh, the test bales I made yesterday are averaging nine to 14% in storage. And I, I've seen spikes within, within that overnight period before when something's gonna sweat and it's not. So I think the rest of the stuff's good to go. Gonna put it together. Huh, must have lost a bungee cord. 13 so far that feel beautiful. Uh, yeah, game on.
Okay, 78 on the first wagon, and as usual, could have fit way more, but this field gets weird, and I've got to weave around things and go up and down hills, so I'd rather do that with an empty wagon. And then a few more windrows on the top to finish it off. I Maybe 130 here? That's my current guess. Well, I think 130 might be a little over-optimistic. I'm changing that to 120. Well then, 45 on the second wagon. That makes 123 for today, plus eight yesterday, 131. That's actually pretty on target for doing this field early comparing to other records. I have times I've gotten way less. 2020 comes to mind. Um, I think I got 65 bales doing this even a little later in May, and but it was such a dry spring that year. So first cut yields were down everywhere uh, for much longer than that. Um, most I've ever gotten off this field is 2.30. Um, later in May, that was getting pretty close to the 1st of June. So I'll take 1.30 nice bales off of this. <laughs> that, that works for me. I was a little worried when I mowed it that I'd get less than 100. I don't know. I feel like I had nightmares about 50. So this, this works out pretty nicely. And if we have any kind of normal year, I'll get a bumper crop of second off of this. Um, like I said in the last video... I, there was one time I got 90 bales an acre of second cut. <laughs> Normal around here is 40 to 50. So that was almost double yield. So getting a jump on the season, making sure everything works, getting beautiful quality hay out of it, and hopefully getting a lot of second. Um, it's well worth it for me getting going this early. Bale check though. This is the last one in the chamber I just pulled out. Oh boy, it is nice and dry. So dry. Nice and green. Stems are in good shape. It, uh, you know, it's always interesting with this early hay. The, the leaves are super, super dry. The moisture meter on the baler was coming in between 6 and 10% moisture, but I know it's missing the stem moisture. That happens every time, uh, you know, those the sensors in the side of the bale chamber are only catching what's sliding by it, and the stem moisture is not being caught. So what'll probably happen, and I'm going to check these, monitor them in the barn, it'll probably have a bit of a moisture jump over the coming days, and then it'll equalize and drop back down again. Um, but with it bailing at that low of a percent, I bet we'll stay under 20 with, even with the spike and then it'll drop down to well below 15. I have enough data from previous years doing it super early like this, that I'm actually starting to get the hang of it <laughs> rather than being super worried about it all the time. Well, here's the unloading setup at this barn. Takes a little bit to get it all keyed up to do, but it's my only barn that I actually have to use an elevator to get it up in a loft, so it's not too bad. Just have to get the wagon lined up. Really appreciate this chute. I actually got a grant for this elevator a number of years ago, and I went all out and got this loading chute. The co-op said I was the only one to ever ask for the accessories for it. <laughs> Those rails help too. So anyhow, we'll get the small wagon knocked out, finished with the larger one, <laughs> see how out of shape I am. Probably quite. Well, let's look at a few more of these bales while we wait for the help to show up. Yeah, goodness. I don't think I've made early first that I've been this confident about. It's always it's always a little weird with the stems. So they're saying one uh, one little bit of rain here Saturday. It's Thursday right now. And then we might have another five or six day stretch. I might knock down everything else in this end of town deal with half yield of first cut on this end, which I never get full yield on the first fields, even if I wait till the beginning of June. Uh, but yeah, get this end of town done. 
let second cut start growing like crazy, get some fertilizer down on it in a few weeks. I bet the <laughs> there's still a lot of the fertilizer I put down that's that's still in that soil and gonna kick the beginning of second cut along quite a bit. So I gotta crunch a little numbers. What I might do is actually a bit less fertilizer than usual for second. Not quite half rate, maybe something more than that. But um, when you're looking at the amount of tonnage you're removing, I mean, the tonnage obviously is less on this. So I don't know. That might be another tiny benefit here to getting going early. Okay, 130 in the barn. One broke. Feels nice to have this. Well, I've fit 600 in here before, so nice to have it started anyway. So I was just going to spend some time updating my spreadsheets. And I was like, oh, I wonder what I put in for a placeholder for the first field. <laughs> it's exactly what I got. Oh, it's funny. Just checking the hay around 11 a.m. the next morning. Things seem great. I really wasn't worried about anything, but I like to get some data with the hand probe moisture meter. And uh, let's see. These hand probed yesterday after we were done putting them away at around 9 to 11 percent, which is fine. <laughs> which Under 15 is what we shoot for. Today, it's averaging like 9 to 13%. Um, and the six test bales I made a day early, um, what is it right now? 11 to 15%? You know, they're, they're going through a little bit of a moisture spike, which I think is pretty normal, uh, especially as that little bit of stem moisture evens out. But comparing it to last year, last year's early batch, the next day, I think was up to, was it 13 to 17%? And that stuff ended up being completely fine. Um, so this stuff's a good 4% lower after 12 hours of, in storage than last year's stuff. Um, <laughs> it's hard to like do internet research about this. You gotta kind of learn by doing. Um, so I'm, I'm keep me track and I'm gonna check it every day for the next few days just to see the numbers and, and have them written down and be able to compare for future years. But I am feeling extra confident about this stuff. I think we'll leave it there though. Um, yeah, thanks for coming along on this. This ride, all my talking, a little bit of tractor driving, and the rest of the season hopefully will kick into gear pretty quick here.